Good morning. Jean Dobre. Um, I'm very pleased to be here today. It's an honor and a privilege. And uh, I'm going to take a few minutes to introduce you to the group of experts that convenes in the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe under the Sustainable Energy Committee. Uh, this group of experts on CMM is actually one of the expert groups that convenes under the Committee of Sustainable Energy. As you can see here, there's a list of other expert groups. There's a group on resource classification, one on cleaner electricity production, our group on uh, experts on coal mine methane, experts on energy efficiency, and experts on gas, and experts on renewable energy. So the whole spectrum of energy development and use is represented under this Committee of Sustainable Energy. One of the things that our group of experts uh, set out to do a number of years ago was develop a best practices on the capture, use, and destruction of methane liberated by mining activities. What we've done is uh, we've encapsulated the methods of techniques that are common practices. These are common practices that are considered best practices because when the outcomes of employing these practices are superior to the results achieved by using alternative methods, modes, and practices. In other words, these things inculcate all of the knowledge and all of the expertise. They're principled-based, and they're not standards as such, but actually offer guidelines so that any problem can be approached with logic, uh, method, and uh, something that has the durability of time and proven by many, many um, experiences. There's a tremendous global industry knowledge. In other words, no one is as smart as everyone. There is so much knowledge out in the industry. One of the things that our group of, inter of experts does is go out and try to comb through uh, the literature and the practices so that all of these are made available. Uh, there's a rapidly growing knowledge base, and of course there's a lot of knowledge that exists in this country and other coal mining countries in the world, and all of this knowledge comes together in our group. These practices reduce fugitive emissions, they make mines safer, and they use coal-related gases in a beneficial way that's been employed at many mines in several coal-producing countries. These practices are explained in the Best Practice Guidance for Effective Methane Drainage and Use. It was originally published in 2010 and has recently been revised. It's available both in hard copy and on the website that you can see there. There are several lead organizations that were key to making this a, a possibility. First was the Global Methane Initiative that was formerly known as the Methanes to Market Partnership. There is, of course, the UN Economic Commission for Europe Secretariat and the UN Economic Commission for Europe, our group of experts on coal mine methane. And finally, and importantly, the US Environmental Protection Agency. Best practice guidance for effective methane drainage and use in coal mines is a living document. Although it's published and it's in hard copy, and it's on the website, there are new additions that come periodically in the form of case studies and as you'll see as we talk about the International Center of Excellence that is opening here in Katowice, there will be an opportunity for new studies and new uh, insights to be published as we, as we pass along in time. Um, the technical input and editorial oversight from, it was a, from an international team of experts and stakeholders, many of which are here, uh, many of which uh, made huge contributions to this document and you'll be hearing from them later today. It provides background and basis for ongoing work and technical workshops that are held in various countries over the next years. And we've already had a number of these workshops over the past several years. It will be the guiding document for the International Centers of Excellence in Coal Mine Methane opening in 2017. The first one here at the Central Mining Institute in Katowice, Poland, and the second one in Shanxi province in the People's Republic of China. Objectives of this best practice guidance are probably clear, but let me go through a few of them. First, they complement the bilateral and multilateral initiatives to support improved mine safeties. They don't supplant uh, the mine safety pro uh, programs that are existent in the coal mining countries, 
but they're there as reference, and they're there also for leaders and, uh, and decision makers so that they quickly understand the importance and the concepts and principles behind this document. Um, they can be adapted to varying uh, mining conditions. Because they're principles-based, they're flexible. They provide for industry a standard set of recommended principles and standards for methane recovery and utilization. And they contribute to, contribute to assisting UN member states achieve sustainable development goals. The intended audience, as we said, is, is are mining operators, regulators, government officials, and technical professionals. In fact, in the document, there's a couple of pages that encapsulates everything that's in the document. It can be passed off to management so that when you make your presentations, even your management will understand. Um, it's really based on coal-associated gas resources and the coal mining life cycle. And in this diagram, it shows two things. It shows the coal mining life cycle on the top and the gas production life cycle at the bottom. And as you hear me talk later today and some of the other experts that you'll hear from, what you'll hear is that we, both, we all see these as coexisting resources. Often miners have a tendency to think of methane as only a hazard, which of course it is. But in fact, it's a collated, a co-located important resource that's often undervalued, underestimated, and almost always underutilized. And so what we can see is that from, whoops, sorry. So uh, first in the, in the mine planning stage, all of the resources, both the coal and the gas, are undeveloped. And so it's exploration for gas and coal and the mine planning. And then during active mining, there's developed coal resources and there's gas produced and sold during mining. So this is the pre-mine and gob drainage events that take place in many of the mines throughout the world. Even here in Poland, there are some great examples of how to capture that gas and use it. In fact, they're, they're not just examples, they're very, very good examples and are parts of case studies that we use. And then when the mine is closed, we have depleted coal resources, but through enhanced methane recovery and CO2 sequestration, there can still be utility found in these coal mines. And in fact, abandoned mines often produce gas for many, many years. And uh, now there are programs underway beginning in next year that will look at both closed section coal mines or closed sections in coal mines and abandoned mines and how to use those resources effectively. The key message is found in the best practice guidance. As I've already mentioned, there's tremendous industry experience and there's a lot of knowledge uh, in managing methane explosion risk and managing methane emissions. Regardless of constraint, mine worker safety is paramount and should not be compromised. That's the essential principle of these best guidance practices. A risk assessment approach to minimizing explosion risk should be combined with strong enforcement of robust ventilation and utilization and safety regulations. These are probably the key messages in the document. Additional ones are mine ventilation systems are critical components of the overall system to effectively remove methane from mine workings, but it shouldn't be the only thing that's used. Improvements to methane drainage systems can often provide a more rapid and cost-effective solution to mine gas problems and simply increasing the mine's air supply. It's much cheaper to drain the gas than to use the fans, and it's much more effective. And uh, Mr. Bruner will be talking about some of those advanced technologies later today. Uh, transporting methane air mixtures at concentrations or near the explosive range in coal mines is a dangerous practice and should be prohibited. There are, in other parts of the world, things that are being said about the use of, of low quality or low concentration methane, no matter what's said. These are bad practices and should be prohibited. Underground coal mines are a significant source of anthropogenic methane. They make up about 6% of all the human-related coal bed meth or global methane emitted to the atmosphere. But these emissions can, be can substantially be reduced through implementation of best practices. There is a strong business case for installing and operating high-efficiency gas drainage systems and utilizing and capturing the gas. So I sum up virtually everything that I've said and everything I will say during the rest of the day by these two very simple diagrams. So 
on the, on the right side is what we would call a vicious circle. What happens is, is that there's inadequate investment for drainage and use of C, uh, CH4 or methane. Of course, it causes the need for increased ventilation, higher capex and opex, uh, capital expenses and operational expenses, and higher methane emissions. It leads to unpredictable and uncontrolled accumulation of methane, increased uh, danger and productivity, uh, lower productivity, and if, essentially it's an unsustainable operation. And we've all seen this in our experience. Coal mines that don't uh, properly manage the methane end up having problems, failures, accidents, and unfortunately sometimes deaths. On the left side is a virtuous circle. It starts with investment in improved drainage and use of methane. It reduces methane emissions and lowers the capex and opex. It improves methane management and monitoring. It increases safety and higher productivity and leads to sustainable operations. So when faced with those two choices, it's pretty easy to decide if you want to be a part of the vicious cycle or the virtuous circle. Most everyone in this, uh, these pictures will appreciate it if you do. So possible future projects for a group of experts. We presented to the, um, the Committee on Sustainable Energy Bureau and the member states that cross-cutting work and subsidiary bodies undertake could be enhanced through greater cooperation among the expert groups, that list that I showed you at the very beginning of my talk. We're going to propose a project where each of the subsidiary bodies will participate in reviewing and redesigning the future of important but aging industrial complexes. Where raw materials are extracted, refined and used in an interrelated and concentrated industrial ecosystem. We're looking for host countries. Many of the countries in Central Europe, Eastern Europe and Central Asia have these kinds of complexes that are still operating. They're complexly interrelated but they're, they're very inefficient and they're also sources of uh, emissions of CO2 and other uh, noxious gases. Uh, considering engaging in a detailed best practice guidance related to coal mine abandonment and abandoned mine methane as a part of developing guidance for the methane management throughout the coal mining cycle. So when I showed you the life cycle of methane, we've looked at the front end of that life cycle, but now we're taking time to review the latter part of the life cycle that where we're closing sections of mines that are still active and mines that have been closed and abandoned. And then we'll continue developing workshops and other forms of outreach. And I'll plead to each of you that we're also looking for case studies where you've had problems and you've uh, successfully found, uh, uh, found solutions and the results are something that should be passed along. So today, what we'll see is that there's presentations that are really representative of the best practices. We'll talk about opportunities to capture and use CMM, and we show them throughout the various stages, of the life cycle of coal mining. Each speaker has a persuasive argument for considering implementation of these innovative approaches to various aspects of assessing these co-located methane resources by drilling, producing, and capturing methane that would otherwise be lost, and using this undervalued resource to benefit the coal mine, the miners, and the environment. So this is the contact information. I'm on the top there. I welcome any contact from any of you. And then I should also point out that the UNECE Secretariat, Michael Drobik is here as well. And he would also look forward to uh, contact from each of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.